Good morning, everyone. Thank you for making the journey. Some of you have come a long way. Some of you have just come from down the road. Uh, thank you for joining us today and uh, for, the, for the first inaugural annual Landlord Farming Workshop. Um, why are you all here today? Some of you are clients of mine who I ghostwrite for. Some of you are here who I've taught the, the, the Landlord Farming Technique. Some of you are about to start the Landlord Farming Technique. And there's even a couple of you in the room who are still on the fence. And I've come here today to decide whether landlord farming is for them or not. The reason that we've got this workshop is, is that it has evolved from the Landlord Farming Facebook group. And to be brutally honest with you, that's one of the proudest things that, that, I, that I've ever done. In the fact is that we've got a group of ex in excess of 130 letting agents, none of them in competition with each other helping each other out. And I know an awful lot of you have come up to me on a one-to-one -one basis and said you've got an awful lot from it. And I hope anyone who isn't a member of that, then please do join the, the Landlord Farming Group on Facebook. Um, right, what's the process of today? And what I, what I wanted to go through today is, uh, before lunch, I want us to totally revisit Landlord Farming. I want us to take it straight back to, to the nuts and bolts of what it is, why it works, some of you, as I said, would have heard of this, and I'll make no apologies because is everybody doing this perfectly? No, I don't think you are. Um, but all of you can learn something from this first lot. We'll go through why landlords don't swap letting agents, why landlord farming works. We'll then go on and talk about um, best practice and what, what good looks like, and I'm going to give you, refresh your memory with some ideas and tips. Then we've got some special slots uh, from individual farmers who are going to come up to the top um, and talk. We've got Richard, we've got Paul, we've got Daniel Wilson, we've got uh, Mr. Plum from, um, from Epsom, and we've also got Daniel from Birmingham who's going to share some ideas with you on a one-to-one -one basis. Then I'm going to talk about uh, some nice ideas that, that have been highlighted in the Facebook group and I just want to revisit those because I think there's some excellent ideas that some of you really should pick up. Then we're going to talk about where the potential weaknesses are in landlord farming. And um, I've been taking advice and opinion from quite a few people. And I'm going to show you where my mind is with that and where the gaps can be filled. Um, and that, that will be particularly interesting. And then finally, I'm going to show you some blue sky thinking on some extra things that you can be doing to generate some more business because all of you are here today for one reason and one reason only and that is to get landlords. I assume that's the case, isn't it? Let's kick off and let's remind ourselves what landlord farming is all about. So, why don't landlords swap letting agents? Shout up everyone. Too much effort? Fear? Fees? Okay, so how much, give me an idea how much it would actually physically cost me, if I was on the market with your agency, with a standard run-of-the-mill property, in actual pound notes, how much would it cost me to move from your agency? Shout out some numbers. Two, three thousand? Yeah. Well, you are in the posh area, Chris, in Hampstead, yeah. where the average value yeah. of a property is 1.4 million. Let's, let's bring it back to reality, though. 400 quid. 400 quid. Nothing. Nothing. Yeah, but you're nice, Jenny. Um, it costs an awful lot of money to, to, to swap letting agents. It's the same reason why you don't swap banks. People think we're all the same. If you swap letting agents, you're going to have to, it'll cost you money to leave the letting agent anyway. So if you're offering half price fees at say 5% and the other, and, uh, sorry, the other agent's offering five and you're on at 10 or the other way around, if they swap, they're going to have to probably pay 15%. And the risk is not worth the reward because all you letting agents, you're all the same. What makes you so different? Because I can tell you here and now, if you took off the logo of most letting agents off their websites, they all look the same because everybody's trying to conform to a home page with lettings, sales, why should you use us, contact us, about us, here's some properties, click here. There's no difference to, to, to any of you. I mean, what makes your agency so different, Sanjay? Uh, we like to do things bespoke. 
You're not the same as everyone else. In one sentence, Paul, why should I use your agency? What makes you so different? Okay. Does a landlord care what your logo looks like? Does a landlord care what services you offer? Does a landlord care about the fact that you open seven days, eight days a week till nine o'clock at night? Go through there. Does anyone? What makes your agency so different, Melissa? Okay. I would actually nail that down into one thing. The only thing that makes your agency different from his agency is that you are you and you are you. Because all a landlord wants is someone to look them in the eye and say, Mr. Landlord, I will care for your property as if it was my own. That's all a landlord wants. All of you have seen that the, the um, landlord survey done by the Property Academy. So what you have to do is if you are going to get landlords to use you, you need to prove customer service and trust. Because nobody does business with someone that they don't trust. Can you prove, but that's the, that's the problem, chicken and the egg. How can you prove trust if you don't have the property in the first place? Chicken and the egg. You've got to have the property to prove the trust, but you can't prove trust without having the property. Chicken and the egg, it never works. That is why letting agents fundamentally are quite lazy when it comes to um, um, their stock because they know the landlords won't swap just like the banks are quite lazy when it comes to their bank accounts because they know that most people will not swap their banks. I used to be a bank manager for the Halifax and in my time as a bank manager the only people that used to walk into my branch saying can I have a bank account they might as well just have had a t-shirt that said I've just walked out to Nat West next door and then bar stools, that's a technical term, have charged me £300 bank charges. They're the only people that walk through the door. I bank with the Yorkshire Bank, and I was a bank manager for the Halifax, and I couldn't even be bothered to move my bank account. So how the hell are people, how the hell are banks going to, because banks do these easy swapping services, but no, has anyone swapped their personal bank in the last two or three years? What, do you, does anyone love their bank? Put your hand up if you love the bank. What, who do you bank with? First direct. First direct. Flipping religion, that is. Every, has, anyone, does anyone, has anyone else got friends that bank with First Direct? And do they rave about it? It's worse, it tell me it's worse than a religion. I, why haven't I swapped? I can't be bothered. And none of you... What if I offered you £100 to swap? Would you swap? £200. Give me £200 and 5% interest. You're not swapping. Why not? Why aren't you swapping? You can't be quite happy, indifferent. Do you think most letting agents love, landlords love their letting agents? Well, obviously you, but I mean, everyone here, they're going to love you. But do you think, let's look at the corporates. Do most landlords love their letting agents? Do they just, is it a toleration? It's a toleration. So... So if, if there's a toleration there, surely there's someone that surely if they could find someone an agent that, that, that they liked better, they're going to use them. But we said no one cares about your brand, no one cares about your services. You know, I read this book. I certainly recommend anyone buy this book. It, this is my this is my marketing bible, and I read from chapter four seven no. no. Your customers don't care about you, your products, your services. They care about themselves. Before you go any further in this book, you have to accept this truth as the first step. Most of us feel we have something wonderful and revolutionary to offer people. We don't really. At least not anything more than customers can probably find elsewhere. If that's really true, how do we get customers to pay attention to us trust us and ultimately buy something from us and keep coming back for more. That is the most fundamental thing of lettings. How the hell are we going to get a landlord to swap letting agents? I'll give you an idea.